We do know that uh, flower beetles are nocturnal. They live in cracks, they live in cre crevices, and we are really focused on the red flower beetle as the super insect that we're trying to kill in most of our, our <coughs> accounts. Um, we found out that the red flower beetle versus the confused flower beetle needs twice the amount of fumigant, sulfuryl fluoride, profume, in order for it to kill it. This is a uh, sawtooth grain beetle who lays its eggs in cracks to protect it against uh, its enemy. So we not only as a gas we have to kill the egg, we have to kill the egg that's packed inside of a crack or crevice. So if they're living in cracks and crevices, they're harder to kill and our gas has to get into those cracks. Let's take a flour mill where you have wooden, old wooden floors, maybe made out of poplar that are cracked and the flower beetle get down and the, and the flower gets packed into these cracks and that insect gets in there and then you have to be able to get your gas in there, not only in there to kill the adults, adults are easy to kill, but to kill the eggs so that three weeks from now you don't see a reemergence of that particular insect. I have some insects that I'll show you some pictures of some eggs that are probably only breathing once every two or three days. So the gas that's out there has to be there present in those two or three days in order to kill the egg. So we're really concentrating on the eggs. We identify by the adults, but we concentrate on, on the eggs. All right, fumigants in the environment disperse by diffusion. So whatever I put in here will end up over in that corner over a period of time. It'll seek its own level. Similar gas exchange in insect eggs take place by diffusion through their respiratory structure or openings in the eggs. If you don't kill the eggs, I can promise you when you ship that product wherever it's going overseas, let's say popcorn coming out of the country, or if it's grain that's being shipped in New Orleans, by the time it gets to wherever it's going to go on a warm summer day, you're probably going to have some very small little larvae. And here are the pictures of what an egg looks like. Now these eggs, which are dried fruit beetle eggs, live in bananas, rotten bananas. They live in organic matter. And they stick it in there and there's not a lot of oxygen inside. So you can imagine how do you kill an insect that isn't going to be breathing much. And if you look here, we only have two little openings for that whole egg that then can be used for breathing. If you split that egg open, it's almost like a SCBA self-contained breathing apparatus. It's like an aqua lung, and it was born probably with a certain amount of oxygen as one cell to be able then to be able to use this and for this uh, this oxygen in here, and then take in a little bit, store it, live inside of a banana or a grain bin or mush wherever organic matter and then be able to use that and, and breathe with it through the, about a seven day period of time before it emerges. So these are called aerophils, and aerophils are microscopic holes that dot the surface of an egg and extend down to the inside of the egg, creating a network that allows gaseous exchange with the environment surrounding the egg. If you want, if you want 100% kill, or let's say 99% kill, you're gonna to have to kill the eggs. This is what you're gonna to have to do. Now let's take a look at how smart the insects are. This sawtooth green beetle, which isn't here, smelled through this hole and it smelled a, a, an odor. And then she backed her abdomen through that hole, even though she couldn't get through it herself, and she laid eggs around that. Now that development inside of a package, let's say it's popcorn for instance, then would go on and when that popcorn got to the consumer, now you have a customer complaint. And I think what I'm trying to get to now is that our job, no matter who you are, is, is to be able to reduce customer complaints. I actually wrote a book um, a couple years called, a book called Reducing Customer Complaints, and it's working from the back end of the customer complaint forward to what actually caused it. If you look at the mouth parts, you can tell the function of the insect. Think of things like mosquitoes. What's the function of it? Think about beetles and weevils and borers. And if you know what the mouth parts do, then you can tell what the function of the insect is. Well, how do we go about this? We've got a diverse group of people in here. Case study out of Australia. Uncle Toby's, Uncle Toby's is kind of like a Kellogg's of Australia. They put out their pheromone traps like we've done in this room here. On Friday, they check their traps 
and depending on what they catch in their traps, that's the place on Saturday morning the cleaning crew goes in and starts doing the cleaning of equipment. So everything is basically focused by the trap catch. And I think that in a pest management program, let's say if it's uh, Jiffy and, and uh, uh, Smuckers, uh, these type of things will help you to know where to kind of clean up the problems first.